friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have a super, super duper party pooper beater fiddle here. <laughs> this thing has been beat to death. Now, I've seen them in worse condition, don't get me wrong, but this, you know, the finish on this has been taken off, obviously by some kind of amateur or something. The crack has been repaired here once before. It's not level. It's higher on this side than it is here. The back is loose on it, but not real loose. It's, it's loose in a number of places. Probably wouldn't be very hard to get it apart. There's a crack there behind the neck that you can see uh, where it's not glued down real good. I can't tell. Well, yeah, I can tell. That neck is not down in the pocket like it should be, or at least I don't think it is. The height here is pretty good. I would say they set it to the height and not to the neck joint is what I'm guessing. It looks to have been that way a long time because I don't feel anything around here that it looks like it's been that way a long time. I, I really don't know. I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> it's like, ugh. you know, you, you, there's so many issues. I mean, and it depends on what, how far you want to take it too. And then there's a big chunk of wood missing there. Do you want that fixed? You know, like this uh, saddle that goes right here to hold the tailpiece up, that's missing. The uh, nut is missing. The tuners, the uh, tuning pegs were pretty bad. They're, I mean, they're, they're, I guess they could possibly be salvageable, but there's only three of them and they're not really very good anyway so I would replace them too. The fingerboard has got a lot of grooves in it but I think it can be cleaned up. I don't think it's ebony. It appears to be just a, a brown wood of some sort. You know in its day when it was made this was a fairly decent fiddle. It's got some curl to the back. Uh, it's not a horrible fiddle by any stretch it's just in horrible condition. It's not a high dollar fiddle. One of the things the customer is very interested in and has mentioned it a couple of times is that he has this feeling there's a name under the label that's in the fiddle. Well, I mentioned to him that I have seen dozens and dozens of labels out of fiddles and I've never seen anything written by hand under one of them. He thinks there's a maker's name written under this label. I don't know exactly why he seems to have gotten the idea from some place on the internet where someone else pointed that out. I can't say that I've seen this exact label, but I think I have. I, you know, this label looks very familiar to me. It says Antonia Stradivarius, and then it's got the Cremona thing, but it's spelled really long. It's got, I'll just spell it because I can't pronounce it, C R E M O N. And it looks like an either an E or another O N, and it's so far back there I can barely tell. It looks like S I S maybe. That's hard to tell. And then it's got the Facet Bat No 17, and there's a blank after the 17. Um, I can't really see much else there. I sincerely, sincerely, sincerely doubt there's any name under that label, but the customer really wants to find that out. I'm not too sure what to do with this. I mean, I, I hate to take it apart just to try to take that label off, which I think is almost impossible anyway, and uh, just to see that, <laughs> you know, the only legitimate reason for taking it apart and if this was a high dollar violin I would certainly take it apart and fix this but would be to fix this crack better. On this particular fiddle I think if it were mine I'd probably just fix it as is call it good string it up and play it you know um, I don't know it's you're, you're torn all the time on these things on which decisions are the right decisions uh, you know, for the value of this, I think I'd fix it as is, call it good. But, you know, because he seems to be very interested in that label thing, I'm thinking about taking it apart because that seems to be kind of like an obsession. <laughs> He's got it in this note. He sent it in a couple of emails. 
and uh, when I tried to discourage him, he followed up with another email, which didn't sound like he was discouraged. So, here we go. I see a little bit of everything in this business. You'd be surprised the things I see. And I'm surprised at what I just saw. This may not mean much to most of you, but that's what I found in a fiddle. Now, I know what it is. That's not the issue. It's just, for the life of me, I can't figure out why they made it like that. Do you see that? It's pointed on both ends. It's a sound post. <laughs> They're normally not pointed on both ends. I've never seen one pointed even on one end before. <laughs> that is really not the way to make a sound post. Let me just confirm if you ever, ever thought that you should make a sound post that's pointed on both ends. Erase that thought from your memory. <laughs> it's not the way to do it. It's really bad. If you put that in there under string tension uh, with those sharp points, they're going to bust your top. I don't know why this one's not broke where the sound post is. I would say the guy just got lucky. That's all I would say. Or he never had it standing up because it wasn't standing up when it got here. But that is a good souvenir. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put that in the case and send it back to the customer just as it is. I think because the back is loose in several places, the top does not appear to be loose anywhere. And because of this neck joint, I think I'm going to take the back off rather than the top, even though the top is what needs to be repaired. I can repair the top with the sides attached, no problem, I think. But I think I can fix more issues by taking the back off in this particular fiddle than I can by taking the top off. The back is the more common thing to come off anyway, but in this case it's got more to do with other issues. Well, I have to tell you, it was loose around here, but it's not loose anywhere else, and it's not wanting to come loose and it's even starting to form a tiny little crack here where I'm trying to force it up and I hate to you know create more trouble than we got I think I'm gonna back up and punt here and see what I want to do because it's not coming loose easy it's glued very well actually hello friends Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop wasn't gonna film this particular instrument uh, because it's just one of many that come through the shop and it's just kind of average But I thought you know I'll go ahead and show how I fix this one problem on this one instrument because uh, I think it could be helpful to a lot of people this this fiddle is One of thousands and thousands and really probably millions made you know probably in the very early 1900s late 1800s you know, it's a copy of a Stradivari. Uh, it says Antonio Stradivarius in the inside facet bud or whatever that is, Anno 17 something. You know, one of millions. And they're just copies. And this particular one would probably be a pretty decent fiddle if it was fixed up all the way. But that's not my charge in this particular case. The customer just wants a playable instrument that he can try to learn on. He got it cheap and he just he doesn't want to put a lot of money in it it needs to be refinished because somebody has just ruined the finish on the top of it I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit the fretboard was really badly uh, grooved and pitted uh, from strings over the years and I've taken a straight edge and scraped that smooth and got most of that out of there but somebody had done a poor job right here of gluing this back together this crack now the best way to fix this would be to take it apart and do it right. But again, that's too expensive in the, for this particular customer. And, you know, the back was already starting to be loose, so I thought, well, I can probably still pop the back off and do it pretty quickly. But, in this case, there was part of the back that was loose, but the rest of that back wasn't going to come loose easily. And if it's not going to come loose easily, that translates into a lot of time and effort to do it correctly. So the bottom line is the best way to fix it, and I talked to the customer, we just glue it back together, we put the back back on it, all the parts are solid except for this one crack. I, 
as I mentioned, somebody else had glued it and they glued it uneven. It was, there was a big hump here and I hate that. I really do. When you see that, it's just not good. So I just took my X-Acto knife and I went right down the crack. It wasn't glued tight anyway. It just had a lot of glue in the crack. So I just went right down through it and I tried to straighten the crack out as much as possible, get rid of the loose wood and the, and the glue using the back edge of the X-Acto knife as a scraper as you've seen me done in the in other videos and anyway I'm trying to get just a very even crack down through there you know again it's one of those deals where you make it a little worse before you make it better and but if I can get a pretty uniform straight crack down through there then I can get a piece of wood and fill this crack and do it right now you can see right here we've got a little problem and we had a little chip out there, but we'll, I'll save that little chip and we'll put it right back in. All right, I've made me a very thin strip of wood here. As a matter of fact, it's pretty darn thin. I'm going to say it's in the 20 thousandths range. I haven't checked it exactly. I just did it by fit. 24 and a half thousandths, it looks like. So uh, now I've just barely inserted it in there. My idea is to pencil in the curvature of the outside, but that'll be the inside. And that way it won't, you know, it's not going to match perfectly on the inside. We, you know, I'm not naive enough to think that. But on the other hand, it'll fit better. And so if somebody ever takes it apart in the future, it won't look horrible. It just won't be perfect. Now this is so thin that I think I'm actually going to do this. I think I'm actually going to cut it with scissors. I've done this before and it's worked and I think this will be the best way to do it this time. And it does look like it's going to work perfectly. And rather than wasting a lot of time with other methods, this method works pretty darn good on something like this. And that way you can cut right to the line and, and you're pretty much assured that it's going to match pretty close. Now I think what I'm going to do, this top in here has a tendency to want to pull down. I think I'm going to put a little sound post in there to keep it up because when I tighten this up it's going to go down even more. Yeah, it's a little extra work and a little bit more time, but I think in the long run that's the way to do it. In fact, Instead of putting a sound post in there, I think I just solved my own problem. I have this thing that measures sound posts, and I just pulled up on it real hard and just tightened it down real tight. It's perfectly smooth now. I'm just going to go with that and see if that'll work. I think it will. All right, and now I'm just going to try to fit this in here pretty well. It seems like it's just a little tight up here. I see one little trouble spot. There's a piece of wood inside their fiber wood. It's causing me trouble here, and I may just have to cut that out. I hate to do it, but may have to. Now the next thing about this is I don't want to get a ton of glue in here, and I don't want a lot of squeeze out and all that kind of thing. I really want this to be a light amount of glue, and maybe even to say it differently, I want it to be the right amount of glue. And I think we can do that with a paintbrush and just a delicate touch here. Well, the thing about the tight bond is that it will be as strong as the wood or stronger. So if we can get you know a, a good contact with the glue and the wood, I think we're home free. There we go. I think we did it there. Yeah, that's good. Now, that is a nice tight crack. It looks to be pretty darn level. That really worked well. Now I'm going to try to just chisel off the rest of the wood that's here without touching the top itself. I could wait till the glue's dried, but the reason I'm doing it now is if there's a problem, I'll see it now, and I would like to see it before the glue dries. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure the top is level, is what I'm trying to do here. All 
and it just looks real good now. It looks real tight, real level. Sure, you can see that big white patch, but we can dye that, and I think we can make it look pretty darn good. And if we do it right, you might not even be able to tell it at all. I'm just going to carve off this right around here and fix the end. May have to wait on that a little bit because it looks like there's a little bit of additional problem right there. We may have to fill. Got a little piece of chip out right there that we've got the chip right here and I'll probably put that right back in too. I think we can mash this piece of purfling right back in the spot and get it perfect. See if you can see that detail there. That little piece of purfling here had popped out and I put it right back in place right through my patch. So, you know, once we clean up this patch and stain it, you won't even be able to tell it at all, I don't think. Here's another damaged area and you see this fairly often. The saddle would sit right here. There's an ebony saddle that sits right across here between this cutout and it should have a, a plate to sit on here on top of the uh, side and it's glued to that and then it, then the uh, tailpiece and the strap of the tailpiece goes over that saddle and that hard ebony keeps it from tearing through the top. So there's no, there's no place to put that saddle right here. So we'll have to create a little place. I don't think that's going to hold. I really don't. I think we need to cut a little bit more out and to make it hold well. I don't want it to break on the guy again. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut it a little bit deeper. I'll bring you back when I get the shelf cut and then we'll get a saddle to fit it. I was going to uh, make a new uh, one of these from scratch out of ebony. But then I looked at my used parts, and here's one out of rosewood that fits it almost like a glove. As a matter of fact, it's just, it does fit it like a glove. It'll save the customer time and money, and it's going to be perfectly good for an instrument uh, in this particular situation. Um, you know, if we were restoring this to perfection, then I would probably go ahead and make the ebony, but in this case, this will be fine and do a great job. The rosewood will hold up just fine. Going to clean this up a little bit now. It's pretty smooth, but not quite perfectly smooth. So I'm hoping to take this little scraper blade and try to scrape it smooth without hitting the top of the violin here. Trying to do it so that you don't really have to do much sanding because the sanding always uh, is hard to disguise. Believe it or not, it's, it looks like you should feel that pretty good. You, and you can feel it in a place or two, but not too bad. Now let's see if what we can do about cleaning this top up and making this blend in right here. And I think we can do that we've got her whipped it's got a big chunk out right there but that's that's just cosmetic that's not anything that's going to make any difference on him getting to be able to play it I'll tell you one thing that does bother me and I may have to fix this yet is the neck angle is pretty low on this it's only at five eighths of an inch I would really like to see it a minimum of three quarters and so it's a full eighth inch lower than where I'd really like to see it. The other thing that bothers me about that is the neck joint there. You can see behind the neck joint. I don't know. We may have to take that off of there. Uh, it doesn't look like the neck was set into the body at all. It looks like it's just glued to the face of the body, which is really weird. But that's what it looks like. I don't know if it'll come loose if I 
work on it a little bit. It feels like it's slightly loose already. It's, it is glued to this plate really well, so that's, that looks like that's real solid. So, I don't know how hard that's going to be to get broke loose, but if we could break that loose, I think it would come loose pretty easy. It would be nice that the fingerboard was off of there, but the problem is the fingerboard is glued really well. I tried to take it off earlier. because it was loose in a place or two and I glued the loose places back and decided against taking the fingerboard off. Off camera I've been putting hot water in here with uh, an eyedropper and I've been wiggling this back and forth and putting the knife in there as much as I can and it's it's going through almost all the way. I can't really figure out what's holding it. It's, uh, it's definitely made different than most. It, most of them are set back in there which makes them even harder but this one doesn't appear to be set back in there unless it's some weird dovetail that I've never seen on a fiddle because uh, it's not coming out and it's not wiggling I mean it's wiggling pretty good you can see the joint moving a lot here but I don't like to force things I just like to you just keep wiggling it you just get it looser and looser you know you just take your time with it and and wiggle around. And I've got it cut loose from the bottom here, so the bottom's loose. So I really don't know what's holding it at this point. It doesn't seem like it should be held by anything. So I'm, I'm really beginning to wonder if they didn't do something different with this and cut some weird dovetail and then put the top over the top of that, which you can't get it out then. You know, I don't know. Because I thought the knife would go all the way through. It doesn't doesn't seem to and I can't really see all the way through there even though I've opened it up a lot I don't know I don't know what the deal is really not run into one quite like it to be that loose they usually just pop right on out I got the neck out and I'm rebuilding the neck joint. I wiped the instrument down with a leather dye wash to kind of disguise that light area that was in these two spots. And that helped it a lot, I think. I tried to use about the same color that the fiddle was originally. And then I just wiped it down with some linseed oil. I'm gonna let that set for about, oh, 10 minutes or so. And then I may wipe off the excess. Well, we got this Strad copy fiddle all put back together. You can see there where we fixed it. Uh, if you look close, you can see that line there. And uh, it's pretty good shape. You know, their finish isn't tough shape all around it. We oiled her up and made her look better. But, uh, you know, it could use a, a refinish job, really, is what it probably really needs. But that's a lot more money, a lot more time, effort. Reset the neck, got the neck up high enough now where we can get a tall enough bridge on it to play it. The uh, neck was down at only 5 eighths of an inch and barely that, so that would be a very short bridge. <laughs> so we've got the bridge up there about uh, average height, I guess you'd say. And, you know, a new tailpiece, new end pin button, got all the brakes and things fixed. You know, I can't really play a fiddle very well, so I'm not going to try to play much. I'll just do a little shuffle on it or something here, just so you can hear it. It's a little on the harsh side, but I think that's more due to the strings. I put a cheaper grade of strings on it rather than spending the big bucks for the, for the expensive strings. practice to get that bow arm going and I don't have it going so anyway it does 
was, you know, I think it's got potential. Uh, we probably should have put the better strings on it. Uh, those are another 20 bucks more, though, so I don't think he really wanted to spend any additional money because it did run into quite a few dollars here fixing it up. But uh, anyway, it'll be a good one to learn on, and uh, he can always put better strings on it down the road. So, hope you enjoyed that little fix. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.